Everything comes fulfillment. There is always a period of waiting. Anything God has promised you, if there is a promise, then it means God say. And most of the time, God will say at the beginning, but he will never stay at the beginning. He will wish you, he will promise you at the beginning, but he will go and wait you at the finishing line. That means, there is a process here that you will go through from the beginning to the finishing line. That process is the process of waiting. Many believers, they don't backslide at the hearing. They backslide on the process of waiting. Many Christians, they don't give up when they hear. They are very much encouraged when they hear. When there is a prophecy, they are stunned. They pray a lot. They don't fail to charge. They don't pray. They don't fail to pray. They always come to Kesha. But in the season of the fulfillment, before the fulfillment, there is a season of waiting. That's where ministers lose hearts. That's where they grow weary. That's where they, they lose their strength. Any great minister has learned the secret of waiting on God. There was a testimony the other day of Bishop David Ayome of uh, uh, the son of Bishop uh, Oyedepo. When the son came from, from US where he was preaching, ministers, serious people came and told him, now the son of the bishop has come. You are losing your job because you can no longer stay here and the son has become from where he has been preaching. And he was succeeding very well in the ministry doing very powerful in the ministry but he was called you know in the third church you are you always transferred don't stay in the same place forever you are transferred so he was transferred from maryland back to nigeria and they told him now that the sun has come you have lost it you have lost it and he said i am here to serve my father whatever my father tells me that bishop or yedepo whatever he tells me that's what he'll do it did not stay long when Bishop now ordained the son and released him from the ministry to go and serve in another to go and serve as himself. Supposing that he anchored to what people were saying, he could have lost it. But he had trained himself to wait on God. And he said, I am here to wait. Whatever my father will say is what I will do, waiting on God. One of the greatest tests that God gives someone is a test of waiting. Test of waiting. Test of waiting. God will never entrust you as a believer or as a Christian if you have not passed the test of waiting. He can never entrust you. He cannot. Because if he entrusts you there are things that will come with the course of time. If he can entrust you before he checks, then he may lose you. And you know, the gifts of God are irrevocable. He cannot revoke it, but he cannot call back his giftings. So once he has done it, he has done it. So one of the tests that you must always be eager to overcome is the test of waiting. Decide from today as a, as a minister as a believer, I would coach myself to wait on the Lord. You renew. You renew your strength if you wait on God. Now, what is waiting on God very fast? Waiting on God is to be patient with God. What is to wait on God? Number one is to be patient with God. Job chapter 9 chapter 29 verse 23 oh, give us Psalms chapter 37 verse 7 Psalms 37 verse 7 Psalms 37 verse 7 rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him so if it is waiting on God one of the simple definitions that I can see is waiting is to be patient with God. Every minister, you must be patient with what God is doing in your life. Any 
anything that is being cooked, there is patience for it to even. If you go and take a kabla even, then it will not be beneficial to you. Ati neza kukuadhiri. Ukichukua nyama kama ilikuwa inapikwa na aijaiva it can bring you some disease. Lakini if you can wait for it mpaka ive then it will be of good taste to you and beneficial to your body. Do not fear because of him who prospers in his ways because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. But I was interested in the first part. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him so when you talk about waiting on the Lord we can simply say it is to be patient with God be patient with the dealings of God in your life be patient with what God how God is working out in your life praise the Lord before God brings out the best out of you as a minister he must first deal with you God before he brings you see even most of the things before we get the best out of it there is something we do out of it hakuna kitu ambayo unaonanga ikiwa hapo let's say let's take an, an example of uh, of uh, of uh, of nuts before you get what is inside you must first of all deal with the macadamia nut ile shell yenye ko nje and then you are able to get what is inside god will allow you will check whether you are patient before he entrusts you with certain levels as minister. Praise the Lord. Number two, another definition, another definition of waiting on God is to have hope in God. Psalms 71 14. Psalms 71 14. When we say waiting on God, we are simply saying it is hoping on God hoping on God trusting on God hoping on God but I will hope continually and I will praise you yet more and more I will hope continually that means I will wait continually we rent elsewhere wait continually I will hope continually you are hoping on God things are not working but you are still hoping on him you did not get what you desired, but you still hoping on God. You did not get the child as you desire, but you are still hoping on God. You did not attain the miracles that you desire, the prayers that you pray, you have not seen the result, but still there is hope in God. That is waiting. Waiting. Hope is a definition of waiting on God. That means what God has promised, you are believing. You see, hope there is believing God will make it happen. So what God has said, you are believing that God will make it happen. So you are hoping on him. Waiting. Another definition. I'm trying to be fast. Is to stay or tarry as, okay, that one you can ask for in chapter 27 verse 14. Chapter 27 verse 14 to hope on God. Another definition of waiting on God is to tarry or to stay as you trust in God. To stay or tarry as you trust in God. Job 14.14 14. To tarry as you trust in God or to stay as you trust in God. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of of my hand service, I will wait till my change comes. Job says that in all my days, I am going to wait until I see the change that I desire. Every minister is a changing minister. You cannot be the same minister forever and expect that you are bearing fruit. If you are always the same, please know you are not bearing any fruit. Every minister is a renewed minister. If it's a renewed minister, then he's a minister that is bearing fruit. But how do you do that? Is by turning on God. Job says that I will wait till my change comes. 
I will wait on God until he says, if a man dies, can he live again? No. He says no. That means, whatever I have lost, I can only attain it if I am alive. And that he says that I will wait on God until the change that I desire surely comes. And that change came. Yeah. When we read the last chapters of Job, the latter days of Job are far much better than the beginning. The latter days of Job. Why? Because he encouraged himself to wait on God. Praise the Lord. So, when we talk about waiting on the Lord, he's simply talking about being patient with God. He's saying, open in God. He's saying, to tally in the presence of God. The presence of God. What can sustain you well as a minister is when you coach on yourself to wait on God. Waiting on God will kill your pride. Every one of us has a pride inside. It's only looking how it can manifest. The only way it can make that pride to die is when you wait on God. Waiting on God. Waiting on God. God has promised Abraham a child, but Abraham did not receive the child the first year. Neither the second year. Neither the third year. God has promised Joseph to become the king. I mean, to become prominent. To become a leader. He never became. Actually, after God promised him, he became a slave. He became, he became, he became, a, he went to the, he became a prisoner. Still, period of waiting. Every great minister, God will allow you to go a season of waiting. That season of waiting will evaluate what will come out of you. What is inside of you will be unveiled in the season of waiting. There is no great miracle that will happen. Listen, when you pray and it happens immediately, that might not be a great miracle. A miracle is not when you expect a child and you get the child. A miracle is when you expect a child and wait for one year, no child, two years, no child, nine years, no child, ten years. When you receive a child, you will see this one is a testimony. Period of waiting. And listen. How you wait determines the value of what you bring forth. The greatness of what you bring forth is on how you have been able to tally how you have been able to wait. There is no great miracle that will happen without waiting. If things are not working today, it doesn't mean that it will never work. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. So if I am weak today, please don't conclude on my story. I might be a person who is about to renew my strength. I, must be a, I might be about to renew my strength. Waiting on God. There is nothing of importance as a minister than coaching yourself to wait on God. Waiting on God will catapult you as a minister to your destiny. The force that can catapult you, can push you, the force that can throw you into your place of shining is when you coach yourself to wait on God. To wait on God. To wait on God. A few things about waiting on God. Number one, as a minister. Why wait on God as a minister? Number one, Waiting on God builds your capacity as a minister. It builds your capacity as a minister. Builds your capacity. The greatness of what you do is in your capacity. If you don't have the capacity, you cannot do great things. The much you can do is as a result of how much you contain your capacity. If your capacity is little, you achieve little. If your capacity is much, you, are, you will achieve much. So, the much you can achieve is in your capacity. Every great person, great ministers, 
they have taken themselves in the season of waiting. Why? Because that's where you build your capacity. Your capacity. When God wanted to use Moses, he allowed him to have 40 years in the wilderness to build his capacity. 40 years to lead his people for 40 years. 40 years for capacity. Please, don't be excited by people who come up and they are doing things immediately. But check on people who have grown themselves. Any person who has grown himself to what he's doing, you cannot, you cannot refute what he's doing. I repeat that. Any person who has taken some time to grow on what they are doing and they are doing the same thing, you cannot ignore that. Because they are not doing that thing simply because of what they have learned. They are doing it because of the experiences they have encountered with God. Any person that is great, listen, even Jesus. Jesus is baptized at age 12, but he's not starting ministry at 12. He is baptized at 12, but takes 18 years to wait before he comes to do ministry. 18 years. He's building his capacity. Capacity. Any minister that is ready to achieve great things, then one of the secrets is to build your capacity. You may not have a lot. You may not even have a name. No one may be recognizing you. But if you can build your capacity, no one can ignore your capacity. Praise the Lord. When I use a I'm saying this. You might not be coming from a good name. Or nobody may be having your history. But if you can build your capacity, no one can ignore. Listen, David is in the bush building the capacity. He is in the bush building his capacity. When he appeared, the saint you are a bushman. You are only you only know how to to, to to shepherd. You don't know how to go to warfare. You can only know how to keep sheep. But David says, the boy that you know is a shepherd, he has handled the lion. He has handled the bears with the hands. What was he doing? He was building his capacity to manifest later. Anyone that is manifesting, you can ignore their age but you can't ignore their capacity you cannot you cannot if you want to become a great minister please don't look for opportunities just build your capacity one opportunity will come one day when your capacity is revealed you will see this is the person you have been looking for it's a person that we need if you want to touch many people as a minister please if you want to touch many people as a minister coach yourself to wait on god because when you wait on god you'll be able to ground yourself to give yourself more capacity more capacity the higher the capacity the greater the result people are looking for result they are not looking for the name you may come with a good name once but they will not invite you again but when you come with a capacity without the name, they will say, whose son is that? Whose son is that? Why? Because of the capacity manifesting. Praise the Lord. I'm saying praise the Lord. David waited for 15 years. He has been anointed but he doesn't become the king immediately. He has been anointed but stays in the bush 15 years to build his capacity. Then after 15 years is when he becomes a king. After 25 years is when he becomes a king of Israel. A season was left for him to wait on God. Within that season, he was able to build his capacity as a king. As a king. Listen. One of the things that will help you well and very well as a minister above all things is when your capacity is stable. When your capacity is enough. 
The more the capacity, the more you contain. The more you contain, the more you are able to give out. Praise the Lord. Why wait on God as a minister? Number two, waiting on God will build your testimony. Listen. To build your testimony. Listen. Believers rise on testimony. Ministers rise on testimony. The pathway of ministers is the testimony. One of the great, the most treasurable thing that you have as a believer, now that you are a minister, I believe you are a believer, the most treasurable thing you have as a believer is your testimony. Your testimony is bigger than the car you have. Your testimony is bigger than the house you have. Your testimony is bigger than anything else that you can mention in your account. If there is anything you can guard as a believer, is your testimony. Is your testimony. Therefore, as a Christian, when you teach yourself to wait on God as a minister, then you are simply packaging, building your testimony. It's about to be revealed. Praise the Lord. Wana Yesu Sefiwe. Any great minister that we are seeing today, they took themselves to build on their testimonies. So that's what they are writing. Anyone we can mention, any, any great minister we can mention today, they never, they did not just pop up. If you go to check on their history, people like maybe Apostle Selman, if you go and check on their history, you'll be able to see they did not just come up and started, we started seeing them. No. There is a season, there is a period that they took to build themselves. So when they came out, they only started riding on their testimonies. Great ministers, they have taken time with the goal. Within that season, their testimony is built. I'm praying that God is going to build your testimony. I'm praying that God is going to build your testimony. Great miracles just it happen in Andre. When you plant a seed, you don't harvest the same seed today. If you plant today, you wait. Actually, there's somewhere the Bible is talking about uh, farmers waiting on the rain. When you plant, you plant even without any size. You only the farmers they plant, they only believe it will rain. And when they plant, when it starts raining, they don't harvest the same day. There is a season of waiting from planting there is another season of waiting before harvest comes forth testimony will not come on the first day the first day you have the miracle that is not the day of testimony children are not born when a woman becomes pregnant they wait for nine months within after nine months the testimony is built i have come with a boy child with a girl child testimony is built after nine months I'm praying God is going to build your testimony. I'm praying again God is going to build your testimony. Genesis chapter 12. Abraham is promised for a child. But he's waiting for 25 years. That child comes in chapter 15. After 25 years of waiting. Waiting. Those 25 years were years of building the testimony. They were years of building the testimony. Yeah. Bible says that God promised them. They believed, though their womb was weak, even to carry the seed. They were stricken with the age. I think somewhere in Romans. They were very old. But because they believed, they were able to bring forth the child. Why? It's because they took time to wait. They are old, yes. God has promised, yes. Then they took the process of waiting. 25 years. After 25 years, there is a testimony that was built that has not been deleted up to date. After 25 years. Joseph is a slave. God has promised him. But the season when he went to Egypt, before he gets to the throne as the second person, is 13 years. 13 years. God has promised him at age 17. He only becomes the second most powerful person at his age 30. So from 17 years to 30 years, there was a season of waiting. Within that season, 
he was able to build his testimony. Praise the Lord. Please, don't be quick to go to manifest. Be quick to build your testimony on waiting on God. Praise the Lord. Wana Yesu asifiwe. Great examples in the scriptures. Great giants of faith in the scriptures are people that are built themselves by the process of waiting. Many people we can quote from the scriptures. People that are quoting the book of Hebrews chapter I think 12 or 11. The people that are quoting there as giants of faith. They were people that built their faith. Actually, the reason why they are called the giant of faith, listen, the reason why they are called the giant of faith is because of the testimony that came out of them. We are referring them to giants because of their testimony. The reason why they were able to acquire the testimony, it is because there is a season of waiting that came their way and out of that season built their testimony. Praise the Lord. One of my greatest prayer for all of us is that God is going to give us a good big testimony that will, man, that will advertise us everywhere. Praise the Lord. Great miracles they happen on waiting. Great miracles don't just happen. They happen on waiting. On the season of waiting. Sometimes delay is not denial. It's a test God is giving you to repackage your testimony. It's a test. An elephant doesn't become pregnant and gives birth the same day or the third day. But a grasshopper may not take carry one week. But an elephant will take a long period. Why? Because the testimony that elephants want to bring forth is not like the testimony of the grasshopper. Please, when you are not able to bring anything today, please don't give up on God. One of the things that God will give you is the test of waiting. If things have not worked today, the secret is to keep on waiting on God because probably if it was worked for him, maybe his miracle was not like the miracle of him. Maybe his miracle was a miracle for three days. His miracle is supposed to take one or year or three years. The more the waiting, the greater the testimony. Praise the Lord. Be, don't be quick to see things instantly. Be quick to wait on God. Because, listen, if at all you are waiting on God, then you are on the good company. I'll repeat that. If you are waiting, you are waiting on God. You have not lost anything. You are on the right company. So long as God on us is on your side and you are always waiting, please keep on on that school. You are on a very good school. Your graduation is going to advertise you everywhere. Why? Because of the season that you took on waiting. Great things doesn't happen. I heard this one from our father. Great things doesn't happen on, on hoping. They happen on the sacred place. Anyone that you see manifesting today, there is a season they took on the sacred place to build their capacity. Praise the Lord. I'm praying for all of us that God is going to help us to manifest great testimonies in Jesus' name. Number three, why wait on God as a minister? Because it is the only process of growth. The process of growth is, is waiting. James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4. The process of growth is waiting. If you want to become a good minister, you need to grow yourself. You need to grow yourself. If, listen, this is how you know whether you are growing or not. Can I tell you one of the ways to know whether you are growing or not? One of the ways to know whether you are growing or not is when you know if you have only one testimony every day every year the testimony is always the same the second year the testimony is always the same the third year the testimony is always the same it tells you you are not growing any person that is growing 
the testimonies are always accumulating. What God did last year, he has done something else this year. What he did in January, he has done something else in October. Things are always building up. Any great minister is doing great things, they are always growing. You cannot impact as a minister if there is no growth in you. If you want to impact the lives of people, then you must grow. You cannot impact without growth. No matter what you do, even if it's the most little thing in the church, the only way to impact is by growth. When you grow, then your impact is relevant. Praise the Lord. When I use a and growth doesn't happen in a day. Growth is a process. It's a process. It's a process of germination. There's a process that that sin will mature into maturity and then will bring forth sins. Praise the Lord. Please, don't give up on me because I'm weak today. I might be germinating. Soon I will be in my season of harvest. It's God's desire to mature every minister. According to God, he wants to mature everyone. There is no minister that God is happy because you're only serving at the same level. God is not happy, I'm telling the truth. If you are serving in the same grade, the same degree, the same output, God is not happy about you. According to God, you have actually backslidden. His new, his glory, his, his masses are new every morning. What is the purpose of new every morning? Is so that he can graduate you from this level to this level. Then the next morning you are not satisfied in this level, he graduates you to another level. The next you are not satisfied, he grows you to another. Any great minister is a great minister. And if you are growing, God is happy about you. If you are not growing, God is not happy. It is my desire that all of us that will desire to grow as ministers. Praise the Lord. God will never trust you with the certain levels until you grow to the sea. God cannot trust you with the higher levels if you have not grown yourself to such a level. The level that you have grown yourself is what God will trust you with. Praise the Lord. So the desire of every one of us according to God is to keep on growing. The more we grow, then he keep on entrusting us. Trusting us with more. Entrusting us with more. Praise the Lord. May God make us grow in Jesus' name. I'm saying may God make us grow in Jesus' name. When God promises, he allows you to grow and wait you at the finishing line. He will allow you to grow because all of us are supposed to bear fruit. We cannot bear fruit if we are seen on the ground. Any seed that is on the ground is not bearing fruit. It is only rotting. So, wakati na panda mbegu, aizangi ikiwa chini, ikiwa chini, ni kuwaza inawaza. So, we don't, God is not expecting us to stay there rotting. God is expecting us to grow. So, God, when he plants him, he will go and wait for three months. And he come to check whether there is a fruit to harvest thereof. Praise the Lord. That's why Bible calls us in the book of John that we are people that are bearing fruit. So when God is taking on you, how many fruits can be harvested from you as a minister? How many fruits? If there is no fruit that can be harvested from you as a minister, then you are failing as a minister because God is regulating you. God is making checking on you. How far are you as my child? How far are you as my minister? Are there many fruits? Grow. Look at your neighbor and tell him or her grow. Again louder. Where you start doesn't matter so long as you are ready to pass through the process of waiting. You may start low, but that doesn't matter if you are ready to pass through the process of waiting. Great men are made on waiting. Esther was a slave girl. Ruth was not an Israelite. She was not a Bethlehemite. She was a Moabite. But by the process of waiting, she followed a old woman who, even if she could have conceived, could not have given birth to a son and get married to her. But she still followed, waiting. 
any waiting will always make you grow in Jesus' name. Why wait as a minister? Waiting on God, it's God's formula to grow your faith. It is the formula of God of growing your faith. Why should you waste and wait as a minister? Because it's God's formula to grow your faith. Romans chapter 4, verse 19 to 12. Yeah, 22, sorry. Romans chapter 4, verse 19 to 22. It is the God's formula to grow your faith. Your faith will never grow if you cannot teach yourself to wait on God. Before glory, there is a story that is built. Before the season of glory, there is a season of building your story. That season is a season of building your faith. Is a season of building your faith. Great people, great ministers are people and giants of faith. A giants of faith. Because what brings us results as ministers is not how much we, okay, it may help us, but the greatest things that will give you a result, supernatural result, is the level of your faith. The level of your faith. Faith grows. Faith grows. That's why the Bible says, as little faith as a mustard seed. Mustard seed is very, very small seed. So that means there's someone's faith is like a mustard seed and there is another someone else's faith that is like a maize seed and there is someone else's faith that is like this house because faith grows. How is the level of your faith as a minister? How is the level of your faith as a minister? Waiting on God is not a punishment but God's will of developing your faith. Waiting on God is not a punishment that God is giving you. It is a method, it is a formula. Any formula that any right formula that you use, you always get results. If you use the wrong formula, no matter how much you know, no matter the mathematics you know, if you use the wrong formula, then the results will be wrong. You may have the right answer, but if the formula is wrong, we even don't check the answer. pastor. We say the answer is copied. But anytime the formula is right, then it guarantees, it authenticates the, the, the answer. When the formula is right, the answer is authenticated. When the formula of God is right, then it proves what God attests to you. The formula of God is your faith. It is your faith. So when you wait on God, then you are able to build on your faith. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his body already dead. Abraham. He was weak, but did not consider his body dead. He considered what God has said and wait on him to perfect it. Praise the Lord. When you Pass the test of waiting. God exempt you many other tests. The secret is, am I able to pass it? The question is, can I pass this test? Your faith is established and built on waiting. Your faith is established. What stamps your faith is your waiting. Is your waiting. If God promises, God checks on your waiting. It, between the promise of God and the, and the revealing of what God promised, God evaluates you according to your waiting. That's why there are many people God promised, but not many who arrived there. Why? Because the process of pro, between promise and arriving, many gave up. Many became weary. Many fainted. Many did not mount up with wings, so they lost on their direction. And they were disqualified by God. But those who waited on God after God promised, those who waited on God, God was checking on them. The process is very important to God. That process is what checks on your faith. Faith is not what God has promised and you see today. Faith 
is when God, God has promised, you don't see any sign, but you still believe. You don't see any sign that this thing can happen, but you still believe. The man of God is sending his servant. He's telling him, check whether there is a cloud. He comes and says no. But he doesn't give up. He doesn't say, God lied. He continues. He believes so long as God does it, he will keep on waiting. Why? Because any waiting is not a waste of time. It is not a punishment by God. It's a season of making what God has promised to come to pass. Praise the Lord. What are you so I'm making a prayer for all of us as ministers that we are not going to be wasting. We are not going to lose hope. We are not going to give up. As we wait on God, God is going to make his promises come to happen. Promises of God are of the basis of faith and patience. The promises of God. What, what owns the promises of God? The baseline. The baseline of the promises of God, it is faith and patience. You have faith on what God has promised and then you are patient to see God is make that happen. Praise the Lord. Anything that God has promised, God allows you to check whether you will be patient to achieve it. And then God is still check you on your faith. Remember, we say faith is like fuel to a believer. Ni kama mafuta ya believer. Any big car without a fuel, it cannot go anywhere. Actually, it is a problem than a wheelbarrow. If you have a car, no fuel is a bigger problem to push it. A wheelbarrow is easy to push. But when there is a fuel, then it has what it can carry it to the next destination. When God is checking on you, how is your faith? How is your faith? Anywhere we want to grow as a minister and touch people and become a blessing to the bond of Christ, then God wants your faith to be great. Praise the Lord. God wants you to be patient. God wants you to become strong to all these promises. He promised us Actually, what is keeping any believer is the promises of God. And the promise, the shoulders of carrying the promises of God is waiting. Let's stand up. I want you to, let's stand up. I want you to lift up your hands and make a desire to God that God, I am not going to give up in this life. God, what you have promised will come to pass. God, your promises are yes and amen. Lord, I pray, help me, Lord. No matter what, whatever you have said, whatever you have decided, whatever you have declared about me as a minister, about me as a life of a minister, God, I pray, help me not be weary. Help me not to give up to God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, help me. Whatever you have promised about me, Lord, help me long it shall come to pass. Help me long shall come to pass. Help me, Lord, shall come to pass. Give us our key verse in the book of Isaiah. Lord, we pray, renew my strength. Renew my strength, O God. Renew my strength, O God. As I wait on you, renew my strength, O God. Lift up your hands, close your eyes, everybody. As you raise that prayer before God, God renew my strength. Help me, Lord, to keep on waiting on you. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I will not give up, O oh God. Help me, Lord, to tally with you, Lord. To be patient with you, Lord. To keep on hoping with you, God. To keep on hoping in you, God. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Yegelo Saprahanda Japa Pakata Pakado Saprahanda Lord strengthen me Lord strengthen me Lord strengthen me strengthen me raise your prayer before God you are not praying a weak prayer you are praying a good prayer Lord strengthen me as I wait on you give me strength give me strength as a believer as a minister God give me strength God give me strength God give me strength give me strength Japa Pakata Padu, 
Yebe lo sabrahanda. Love the Lord, worship the Lord God Almighty. Father, we thank you. We appreciate you, dear Lord. Thank you, Father, for giving us this day.